that's been the main issue within netnography. And uh, what I decided to do to try and reduce any doubt or try and encourage people to uh, use netnography in a way which Cosnet's prescribed, i.e. telling people who you are, is I developed a cultural model which takes into consideration the different stages of a life cycle an individual goes through when they're actually uh, when they're actually online or when they're in a community. And I called it the character-based model. Very creative. Uh, so uh, it involved selecting communities through a process called community window shopping. So I put myself in the position of anybody who is looking to join an online community. You go window shopping. You say, well, which, which community do I want to join? Uh, which um, social media site do I want to subscribe to? What, how much information do I want to disclose about, my, about myself? I then observe the, uh, the individuals through lurking and then take on a different role. Again, this comes from Priest's different categoristics uh, or uh, uh, categorizations of, uh, of internet users. And I provoke the community into talking. Not in a negative way, but I, I put a post out and ask them to discuss it. That post is related to my research, what I want to find out about people. How can I Say that, how can I say that it's going to be different to any other post which will be treated as spam? Well, I've got the research to prove it and I'll, and I'll explain why. And then data collection and analysis, the, uh, the boring stuff. So how did I apply it? Well, I looked at, and uh, it's unfortunate actually um, uh, that this presentation has been done in this way to some extent because the research itself was quite interesting and people sort of ask me often about what I found out in this study. Um, I applied uh, the character-based netnography model to help understand ethical characteristics towards non-consensual downloading. Have you all done it? Or you've downloaded something without permission? Yeah, possibly. Not trying to incriminate anybody here. But <laughs> You can see it in front of the camera. You can see it in front of the, it's true, you've got a camera here, you've got someone here who's possibly recording it themselves. It's, it could be quite incriminating. But here's how I did it, and I'll go into my results in a while. And, and the results are actually quite interesting because they reveal something about internet users, uh, about all of us and uh, how we behave online. Although you probably know already, <laughs> being internet users. I identified potential groups through searching keywords for what I was what I was after. Now I didn't want anything specific, I wasn't looking for a specific group, I wanted to get as general a group as possible because I didn't want to say within my research um, uh, findings that this is the ethical characteristics of people who are into uh, engine tuning or who are supporters of Manchester United or whatever it is. I wanted it to be fairly broad, I didn't want it to be categorized or stigmatized to a particular group of people. So I had some very fairly general and random uh, filters and obviously because of language reasons I've filtered it to English speaking and high activity levels that was quite important I wanted an active group I wanted a group which was very very active so they talked uh, about a lot of things uh, and not that there was going to be one or two postings here or there so I wanted an active group and the, the, as I mentioned they were non-subject specific I then observed in two phases I tried to familiarize myself with the group so that I could go through the next uh, phase and, and find out what the most active postings were and what made them active. I actually did a language analysis. So we got a little bit numerical here. I started to analyze the, uh, uh, the language that was being used, the, the actual level of English that was being used, uh, the time of day that the posting was uh, being put up there. And I tried to familiarize myself with that for a range of different groups so that I could become a part of that community so that when I posted on that community they would treat me as one of their own. They would see, oh this isn't a researcher coming in to find out about us, this is just Imran. Although I don't think that was my name on the community thread, I can't remember what I put down. Uh, so the main focus of the lurking was to understand what made a posting more active and to learn of the group etiquettes. That's really important if you're actually researching online communities, uh, to learn of their etiquettes. A lot of the time, we bombard, as marketers, uh, online communities with what can be regarded as spam. Things which people are not interested in reading. So you have to have something there which they'll be interested in. 
afterwards I, I, I started to provoke. I started to provoke the groups. I started to post on the groups and ask them questions specifically about the research that I was doing. The posting itself informed people that I was a researcher. So that was still a part of it. I was informing people that I was a researcher. Uh, and uh, I, was, I was letting them know that I'm, I'm quite open with you guys, I'm researching you. But that didn't seem to, none of the actual posts that uh, were responded to actually said, oh, why are you researching us? Or even mentioned my research. They all just discussed what I posted. Simple as that. And it's partly because I engaged with that community. It's partly because I got to know who that community was. I didn't intrude or invade that community. Uh, I didn't become a burden to that community. I became a part of the community. So they all responded to uh, what, I, um, what I put up there. I did the analysis and I found three main different ethical characteristics. Now what are your positions on the downloading? I'm not sure how much I'm going to get out of you here for, uh, for this particular question. Uh, but let's assume that none of you have ever downloaded anything and you've never used the internet before. There's on camera, you guys have never used the internet before. Uh, do you think it's acceptable to download something which is uh, copyrighted? To stream a movie? To listen to a bit of music? Yeah? I think, in, 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 I have thought a lot about that. I know some friends that download music and that kind of stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. The <laughs> friend. The friend, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that the thing is, mm, I know that right now music is going to, I mean, for the artist, or the, to be hard. But the, on the other side, music won't die. Never. I mean, music is, I mean, the market will change and will create new ways to, to charge for that or to make mm -hmm. it uh, a work or a source mm -hmm. of money as well. So I think you can, you cannot uh, fight against something that, I mean, it's obviously more, more mm -hmm. cheap, uh, a lot cheaper than, yeah. than, than buying. So let's just give in to it and, and get it all for free. Is that yeah. what you're saying? So that is, if it's good, I think in some ways it's good, and in some ways, of course, it can be dangerous, but I think in general, I think it's, mm -hmm. it's good, yeah. yeah. My friend, uh, good. So okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. Are you close friend? <laughs> in this room? No, it's not, it's not. Uh, yeah. Why do they, sorry? Why do they not they publish their own movies online on their own website? That's a really, really good point. And the first point that you made about, thankfully you're not on camera anyway, so <laughs> the camera's pointing at me, so you didn't get, we didn't catch you. Uh, that's an excellent point. And it sort of raises the, the, uh, uh, the issue behind how much of a lag there is with the big corporations in responding to what is the internet, right? The internet is an opportunity which they have all, a lot of them have missed. Why don't they have their own, why don't they use the internet and start sharing? What, they haven't got the model, they haven't got it clued up. It's because they don't understand the consumer. Yeah, and, and that's what we're talking about here. Social media, getting to know your consumer, into working with your consumer, as opposed to having an us and them mentality, having an us mentality. That doesn't exist with a lot of large corporations, unfortunately. And as a result of that, we see a lot of this going on. So if we allude back to the, uh, the research, I found there was rebellion amongst uh, internet users. The rebellion was, well, I got comments such as, oh, screw intellectual property. Uh, it's all freeware, and uh, we don't really care about the record companies. And there was a lot of animosity towards the actual record companies themselves with the, uh, the rebels. The interesting thing that I noticed with the rebels is when I did some research, because in order to study ethics, in order to look at ethical characteristics, you can't just say, oh, this is the ethical characteristic. You need to go a little bit broader than that. And unfortunately, because of the constraints of what we're, what we're doing here, I can't really go into the details of everything that I did. But uh, I did a lot of research into ethics itself and moral philosophy. And um, because I wanted to see whether or not 
the ethics that were being displayed on the internet were in some way the same or can be assigned to an existing ethical framework, an existing ethical theory. And what I was finding was actually some of it could and some of it couldn't. So what does that imply? Is there a new kind of morality for the internet? Possibly, possibly.